Hey everyone, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, with my review of a classic LEGO Star Wars set from 2001. It's the 7166 Imperial Shuttle. It has four minifigures with Emperor Palpatine, two Royal Guards, and a shuttle pilot. You can see in the windscreen there. It included 234 pieces for ages 8 to 12 and retailed for 35 bucks. Now, $35 is quite an odd price point for a LEGO Star Wars set. You usually don't see them end up on the five marks, but that's what this set ended up costing. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $50 in 2020 money. And if you want to buy this set new in box on a place like eBay or Bricklink, you can expect to spend about $100. To me, the box art on this set really detracts from it. It looks pretty dreary. Like it just doesn't really help anything pop there. So it's not the most beautiful box art you'll ever see for a LEGO Star Wars set, but it is also an old one. So you kind of get that vibe for sure there. On the back, it says, just imagine, the good old Lego slogan there. The set mostly torn apart by the Imperial dudes, and then a couple of alternate builds for the set, including like a rocket ship with like a radar scanner, and then a big mech. So you get a couple nice options. They try to help nudge you in a direction if you want to actually build something else. Oddly enough, the only feature shown on the back of the box is the fact that the wings can open. So maybe this one does not have a lot going on. I have not owned this set before, so I'm actually really excited to build it, and I'll see you in a second with the minifigure. Figures. Our first minifigure up is this lovely Imperial officer in all black with very minimalistic prints for the torso. He's got a conductor style cap. He really looks like a train conductor more than an Imperial officer, especially with that basic yellow smiley face from the early 2000s. It's just not something that looks straight out of Star Wars, to be honest, but I guess it's a decent figure to pilot the shuttle. This set also includes a pair of Emperor's Royal Guards and a of note 2001 this was the very first time that we saw the emperor's royal guards in lego star wars they had the stronger red cape and like i said two of them you can see it's a much stronger cape than what you see on the newer lego minifigures with the capes in the 2020s now and you may prefer this older style i kind of like what they have going on now but the royal guard has remained largely unchanged since its debut here in 2001 and that's probably for the best these were pretty spot on to begin with and there's only so much detail you could add to something like this without it becoming overbearing and they still use that blank black head underneath uh, no face at all for their royal guards which makes sense and finally the main draw maybe as a figure in this set is emperor palpatine and seeing emperor palpatine with yellow skin is very weird to be honest and i think most people would take a look at this and be like what the hell is going on but this was the reality in 2001 you had the old style hood piece there in black again older style harder style uh cape there then as you look to the torso you actually have a pretty nice flowing print for his robes yellow hands as well and that face underneath actually a really good face print for 2001 for palpatine and it's not a smiley face like with the officer so you actually get a pretty substantial level of detail all the way down to the eyes with little pupils in there so they actually did knock themselves out with the detail on palpatine which made him a really good highlight figure for the set the shuttle does present very interestingly. It is the older gray colors on this set, so it's not going to look quite as beautiful as the updated 2005 model, which actually borrowed a lot and basically everything from this design, bar one little thing, but that'll be mentioned in my review of the 2005 version of this set. But this one for 2001 was actually a really good build. Like 2001, 1999, 2000, you know, some rougher years for LEGO Star Wars design-wise, but it was really starting to come into form here, and this, I think, is starting to show that for sure. Now, where I think I have my biggest problem with the general design is with the uh, fin attachment on the top for the shuttle here. It doesn't attach with any Technic. It's just the studs, and that is common for these earlier shuttle-type uh, sets from LEGO Star Wars until you get into, like, the 2010s, really. Like, they were still using just studded connections, and the problem with this is that this could rip off much, much easier than if you had, say, a Technic connection or build to boot with that. So over the years, as like the connection on something like this would loosen through people or kids mainly playing with it because it would just, I think, physically loosen the connection by having it move about that axis, um, you're going to have problems later on. And that is going to be something that's going to break apart on you. Now, the alternative to that is to just pick it up like this and you're perfectly fine. But a lot of people, myself included, want to go straight for that main fin that looks like it should be able to hold the, the weight of the set. And that could be a problem uh, for this set. I'm not sure if any of you can speak to that in the comments section below that, that previously 
owned this particular Imperial shuttle set. You have a trans lime green stud on top as well as on each end of the wings here to kind of uh, have the little flashing lights that they have on Imperial shuttles. The wing design itself is actually really simple. Like it's like 12 pieces or something. It's substantially simpler than you see on modern Imperial shuttle models. And it's fine actually in this case. It actually works out surprisingly well. They use a couple of Technic pieces in here to help strengthen the connection between the wing and then this kind of inner piece here that helps create the angle and also has some, some weaponry on there. And the wings are, of course, attached with the hinges there, so you can drop them down into flight mode quite easily. Move the right wing down just like that. So you can see they drop down actually very nicely into that flight mode. And it does have a nice wingspan there. Very, very uh, large wingspan for a set like this, especially uh, as small as it is piece count wise. It actually is a physically large set, surprisingly so. A set like this today with 200 and some odd pieces would just be minuscule, but they use a lot of large pieces in this set. So we'll get to the midsection in a moment. I do want to take a look at the cockpit and talk a little bit about that. You get a couple of really nice printed pieces here, one for detail showing some of the mechanical workings of the cockpit or whatever is going to be up there, tubes and pipes and whatnot and then one for the windscreen piece there that is predominantly like a white screen just with a couple of lines going up there and it works out really well it's a really nice piece and one that they actually ended up carrying over to the newer set and i like the uh the look for it other than kind of these external bumps on the outside they kind of add a lot of width to it that really uh extends the model and doesn't look great but i guess it's necessary to have um and pulling this off will reveal a interior that is very lackluster you just have some white studs down there at the bottom that you can stick that imperial officer figure on you do have a nice little printed control panel but that's really all you're getting for the cockpit and with the shuttle pilot placed inside very easily you can place the cockpit windscreen piece right back on click it into place and you are going to be good to go there so plenty of space for him you could probably fit another minifigure in there too if you're really going to be conscious about the spacing there but it really is uh the only figure included in the set for the cockpit so it's the only one that makes sense now but the thing i have to say about this is with this area on the ship is that you basically have two orientations for it. You can have it up like this, which looks fine. And you can also have it down like this, which equally looks fine. I kind of prefer it in this position for some reason though. I don't know what that is, but for some reason it does look a little bit better like this than it does like this. I don't know, it's a small thing, but it's something that I noticed. A couple of weapons on either side of the cockpit moving back. You actually have a very nice printed like ventilation piece right above there. Not a great quality print, but a nice design. For the print it's the early 2000s so lego prints were still kind of a work in progress there i would say and then as we move around back you have a couple of antenna pieces to kind of represent some weaponry on the back to shoot out the back of the shuttle to take down any x-wings or whomever may be trying to take you down and then you have some engines here you can see the light blue to kind of represent the thrust coming out of the back of the shuttle not a great design for engines, but you know, they did their best for 2001, I suppose. Now, what I really like about this set is this hinge piece here. This is a hinge piece. I think they use a lot in like space shuttle sets from what I can remember having as a kid. So instead of like with the wings where it's like one, two, three, this is a hinge piece that is really smooth. So it just drops on down really smoothly and that will reveal the interior space on the shuttle. And you can't really see in there very well, but you can pull out the uh, piece here, and this is gonna allow you to sit two Royal Guards and the Emperor inside of the shuttle for transport. So there isn't a lot going on in the interior. Otherwise, this is basically the way you use the interiors. You just use this and slide it in and out of there. It also does hold the staffs for the Royal Guards there. So those are pretty nice uh, to have in there as well. So let's load up our figures and see how well they fit. So an obvious and unfortunate drawback of this design is that you actually have to fold the capes for the Royal Guards. And you can see there's just not a lot of space here. You really don't get a lot of interior space to work with and uh, platform space for for them to sit within. So it's not the greatest design, but it is a decent workaround to not having a removable top panel on the set. So I can appreciate it for that. But as far as like it being optimal, it certainly isn't. But closing that up, it's going to be fine. And you're not going to hear it wiggle around or anything in there during your play. Now there is landing gear on the shuttle. I haven't shown you that yet. And there's also a couple more of those uh, flashing lights on the bottom of the shuttle as well in that green color. The landing gear is really simple and standard, very uh, reminiscent of what you would see in 
the early years of LEGO Star Wars for any set's landing gear. They use this piece a lot, and seeing it here is very nostalgic kind of to me. So that's that's really nice to see, and you can see just a full view of the underside of the ship. Really shows how basic the build is. Overall, this is just not a great Imperial shuttle. It was the first time LEGO took their crack at it, and it shows. It definitely is a decent set for 2001, but certainly by today's standards, not one that you should run out and pick up unless you have some nostalgia for it or you're a completionist collector. I just don't see any other real reason to go out and grab this type of set. So that's the way I look at this one. It's just not that great. And that's fine. That's just the way it is. All the newer sets should be better and they, they are. This one's going to get a 6 out of 10 for me. It is surprisingly not great to me. I had never owned this one, like I mentioned, but owning it now, it uh, definitely lacks in a lot of ways. But the printed pieces are nice. I think that's a certain positive, but the figure selection certainly could have uh, used a boost, and the build just looks not good in the uh, older gray colors. I've never really liked those. Uh, from Lego. I think the newer gray colors are far superior, but let me know what you guys think about this model in the comments section below. If you enjoyed, a like would be greatly appreciated, and you can check out my other Lego Star Wars reviews on the end screen now. Peace out.